All right, we're going live and then we'll let people in. way to start. <laughs> um, a big amen, a giant amen, and a declaration that God is indeed our Alpha and Omega. I'm so glad to be with you on Zoom. Um, it feels like we've traveled back to 2020 again, <laughs> but here we are in 2022, and happy new year, friends. There's a lot of hope ahead. There's a lot of joys ahead. There may be some troubles, but we are here together 
to tackle them together with God, with the strength of God and with the grace and mercy of God. Friends, um, today's service, um, I'm going to have to ask you to prepare a lot of things. We're going to need a, a few more materials than we normally do because we have some exciting things ahead for you today. Please prepare two pens or two markers or two writing utensils, crayons, anything that you have that, but you need two. Um, and some sheets of paper, it could be scrap pieces of paper, but blank um, pieces of paper. And um, if you need maybe some tape or something to um, tape down the edges to your table, um, because some of the exercises that we're gonna do today is going to help um, get us in this state, our brains in the state to receive wisdom as she speaks to us today. So have those materials ready because it's part of the service and also um, candles because this is what we do whether we're online or in person wherever we are we begin worship by lighting the candle as a symbol of our togetherness that even though we are separated by screens we're, I'm coming to you from my house and I'm sure all of you guys are in your offices or homes or wherever you are driving, or if you're driving, please be safe. Um, wherever you are and the way that you, wherever you are joining us from, we are going to be bound together by lighting this candle as this symbol as we start worship together. So um, happy new year. Let's light the candle. I really want to light the candle, but oh, there it is. Okay, here we go. All right, I'm so glad to see all of you and see that you are online if you, if you don't have your video on. Um, it would be awesome if you can turn your video on today because there's some moments where we'll be able to share with one another. So if you're feeling brave and you're feeling like you wanna also show us your gorgeous, beautiful New Year's face, um, we'd love to see it. Um, but for now, um, whether you have your video on or not, we are going to worship God together with this next song. So sing along with us. If you know it, it should be a familiar tune with some new lyrics. So let's sing together. Good morning, Fuller Chapel again, and Happy New Year to you. Um, in Korean, we say, hey, book many받으세요. That means receive a ton of blessings. My name is January, like today, the month. And my name is Mide. And we invite you now together to worship together as uh, Julie has invited us to.
All glory be to Christ. Amen. We invite you now to an exercise called bilateral scribbling, a form of art therapy. This exercise engages both hemispheres of the brain, connecting your thinking to your feeling. And as you do this exercise, scripture will be read to you. The example of how to start this exercise will be on the screen, but feel free at any point to break off and make movements that feel good to you. Good morning, everyone. I'm Brad Strawn, Dean of the Chapel and Chief of Spiritual Formation here at Fuller. What some of you may not know is before I stepped into this role, my primary role was as professor of clinical psychology in the School of Psychology. So today I get to put on my psychologist hat and just say a little bit more about this exercise we're inviting you to engage in. I love this exercise because God has created us as whole embodied creatures. And this exercise capitalizes on that. Bilateral stimulation, or in this case, bilateral scribbling, utilizes both sides of the body in order to stimulate both sides of the hemispheres of your brain. The brains are very complicated, and this is an oversimplification, but people have found this practice to be very powerful. By stimulating both sides of the brain at the same time, it may actually create what we call interhemispheric transmission, or basically greater communication between two sides of the brain. And as you've heard, it may actually stimulate thinking and feeling, bringing them online more in connection together at the same time. You might kind of think about this exercise as a sort of brain warm-up, kind of calisthenics for the brain. Warming up our brain in this way can move us out of kind of a closed lock system that some of us find ourselves in, where we're kind of in a cognitive either-or way of being in the world. We're primarily thinking or we're primarily feeling. But bilateral scribbling may create the integration between thinking and feeling more possible, bringing it more online, more able for you to both think and feel simultaneously. And what we've discovered with bilateral stimulation and bilateral scribbling is that it helps regulate the body and the mind. It calms everything down. It settles us into our bodies and our minds. And it can even regulate our emotions, especially emotions like anxiety. We live in a period of time where lots of us are experiencing a lot of anxiety. So today we're going to invite you to engage in this bilateral scribbling. It might seem weird or strange to some of you, but try it. What do you have to lose? We hope by doing it, it will slow you down. It will help regulate your mind and your body and your emotions. And it will open you up to experience scripture being read in new ways, where you're not only thinking about scripture, you're feeling scripture. You're experiencing it in whole embodied ways. Now I'd like to invite our president, Mark Laberton, to share with us a little bit about the passages of scripture that we will hear read to us today. Let me first just say Happy New Year to all of you and to express how glad I am that we have the chance to be together. It means so much to me and I think to all of us to be able to be in some form of community, even when it turns out that in fact we don't get to be physically in the same spaces. Nevertheless, we can see each other's faces and we can share in this common experience together. I'm so, so grateful. And I'm excited about this chance that we have to have a more extended reading of scripture today. The place of scripture in the community of God's people has always been primary. It's what gathers the Old Testament people of God, the New Testament people of God. It's the core of what draws us to a knowledge and understanding of God. And we're so grateful that the Spirit has given us the written text of Scripture, and that today we have a chance to hear one particular portion of, of the text from the first three chapters of the book of Proverbs. Wisdom, as you know, is presented as two things in the Bible. On the one hand, it's presented in some ways as a proverbial call to action. 
to a coherence between what we say we believe and simply how we do it. So often proverbial wisdom functions in, the, in exactly this way. Know the truth and do the truth. Those kinds of assumptions are built into the proverbial chapters that we're going to be hearing. There's another part of wisdom literature that raises, frankly, more complicated questions that has to do with times when we do the right thing and the wrong thing happens instead. It's really represented in texts like the book of Job or Psalm 73, where in fact, the, the wrangling over, over wisdom is anything but easy. It's represented in the book of Proverbs and other places in the Bible in a female persona. It's really expressed that wisdom is this female voice that speaks to us, that calls to us, that invites us and welcomes us. Think of how many times in Israel's history, in the life of the church, when the church has been in a, in a place of acute anxiety, as Dr. Strawn said, we certainly are in that moment right now. I feel very excited about 2022, and I feel daunted by the challenges that are before us, the uncertainties, the unknown things uh, on so many levels and in so many directions. Let's listen to these first three chapters, welcoming this exercise of bilateral scribbling and taking in the opportunity to simply let God's word in these first three chapters be an invitation to the kind of grounding that calms our spirits, that grounds our reality, that's defined by the wisdom of God. Receive now this text as a gift and I encourage you to share in this exercise together. You may begin scribbling now as we read Proverbs chapter 1. The Proverbs of Solomon, King David's son from Israel. Their purpose is to teach wisdom and discipline, to help one understand wise sayings. They provide insightful instruction, which is righteous, just, and full of integrity. They make the naive mature, the young knowledgeable and discreet. The wise hear them and grow in wisdom. Those with understanding gain guidance. They help one understand proverbs and difficult sayings, the words of the wise and their puzzles. Wisdom begins with the fear of the Lord, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Listen, my child, to your father's instruction. Don't neglect your mother's teaching, for they are a graceful wreath on your head and beads for your neck. My child, don't let sinners entice you. Don't go when they say, come with us. Let's set up a deadly ambush. Let's secretly wait for the innocent just for fun. Let's swallow up the living like the grave, whole like those who go down into the pit. We'll find all sorts of precious wealth. We'll fill our houses with plunder. Throw in your lot with us, we'll share our money. My child, don't go on the path with them. Keep your feet from their way. Because their feet run to evil, they hurry to spill blood. It's useless to cast a net in the sight of a bird. But these sinners set up a deadly ambush. They lie in wait for their own lives. These are the ways of all who seek unjust gain. It costs them their lives. Wisdom shouts in the street. In the public square, she raises her voice. Above the noisy crowd, she calls out. At the entrances of the city gates, she has her say. How long will you clueless people love your naivete? Mockers hold their mocking deer, and fools hate knowledge? You should respond when I correct you. Look, I'll pour out my spirit on you. I'll reveal my words to you. I invited you, but you rejected me. I stretched out my hand to you, but you paid no attention. You ignored all my advice, and you didn't want me to correct you. So I'll laugh at your disaster. I'll make fun of you when dread comes over you, when terror hits you like a hurricane, and your disaster comes in like a tornado, when distress and oppression overcome you. 
then they will call me, but I won't answer. They will seek me, but won't find me, because they hated knowledge and didn't choose the fear of the Lord. They didn't want my advice. They rejected all my corrections. They will eat from the fruit of their way, and they'll be full of their own schemes. The immature will die because they turn away. Smugness will destroy fools. Those who obey me will dwell securely, untroubled by the dread of harm. Place your utensils down and let us pause to listen as wisdom speaks through silence. You may resume your exercise. Proverbs 2 My child, accept my words and store up my commands. Turn your ear toward wisdom and stretch your mind toward understanding. Call out for insight and cry aloud for understanding. Seek it like silver Search for it like hidden treasure. Then you will understand the fear of the Lord and discover the knowledge of God. The Lord gives wisdom. From God's mouth comes knowledge and understanding. God reserves ability for those with integrity. God is a shield for those who live a blameless life. God protects the paths of justice and guards the way of those who are loyal. Then you will understand righteousness and justice, as well as integrity, every good course. Wisdom will enter your mind, and knowledge will fill you with delight. Discretion will guard you, understanding will protect you. Wisdom will rescue you from the evil path, from people who twist their words, they forsake the way of integrity and go on obscure paths. They enjoy doing evil, rejoicing in their twisted evil. Their paths are confused. They get lost on their way. Wisdom will rescue you from the mysterious person, from the adulterer with their slick words. They leave behind the partner of their youth. They even forget their covenant with God. Their house sinks down to death, and their paths go down to the shadowy dead. All those who go to them will never return. They will never again reach the ways of the living. So you should stay on the path of good people, guarding the road of the righteous. Those who have integrity will dwell in the land, the innocent will remain in it. But the wicked will be cut off from the land, and the treacherous will be ripped up. Place your utensils down and let us pause to listen as wisdom speaks through silence. You may resume your exercise. Proverbs 3 My child, don't forget my instruction. 
Let your heart guard my commands because they will help you live a long time, provide you with well-being. Don't let loyalty and faithfulness leave you. Bind them on your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. Then you will find favor and approval in the eyes of God and humanity. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Don't rely on your own intelligence. Know him in all your paths, and he will keep your ways straight. Don't consider yourself wise. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. Then your body will be healthy and your bones strengthened. Honor the Lord with your wealth and with the first of all your crops. Then your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will burst with wine. Don't reject the instruction of the Lord, my child. Don't despise God's correction. The Lord loves those he corrects, just like a parent who treats their child with favor. Happy are those who find wisdom and those who gain understanding. Her profit is better than silver and her gain better than gold. Her value exceeds pearls. All you desire can't compare with her. In her right hand is a long life. In her left are wealth and honor. Her ways are pleasant. All her paths are peaceful. She is a tree of life to those who embrace her. Those who hold her tight are happy. The Lord laid the foundations of the earth with wisdom, establishing the heavens with understanding. With God's knowledge, the watery depths burst open and the skies drop dew. My child, don't let them slip from your eyes. Hold on to sound judgment and discretion. They will be life for your whole being and an ornament for your neck. Then you will walk safely on your path and your foot won't stumble. If you lie down, you won't be terrified. When you lie down, your sleep will be pleasant. Don't fear sudden terror or the ruin that comes to the wicked. The Lord will be your confidence. He will guard your feet from being snared. Don't withhold good from someone who deserves it when it is in your power to do so. Don't say to your neighbor, go and come back. I'll give it to you tomorrow when you have it. Don't plan to harm your neighbor who trusts and lives near you. Don't accuse anyone without reason when they haven't harmed you. Don't envy violent people or choose any of their ways. Devious people are detestable to the Lord but the virtuous are his close friends. The Lord's curse is on the house of the wicked, but the Lord blesses the home of the righteous. The Lord mocks mockers, but shows favor to the humble. The wise gain respect, but fools receive shame. Place your utensils down. Take a look at the scribbles you've made and listen as wisdom sings over you.
you so much, January. And thank you to the readers and for the opportunity to let that text uh, strike us afresh. I hope the exercise was a meaningful one to you and that it that it did stimulate you on, on both sides of your brain and give us a chance to live what is God's desire, which is really a holistic life. And the images that are given in the first several chapters of Proverbs are images of a holistic life. There is no dimension of relationship or thought or emotion or concern, public or private, intimate or, or most global that are, are missed by that brief description in the opening three chapters. I want to focus just on one piece and, and then offer a reflection. The verse that I've been reflecting on for years the most is, is simply one seven. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. That verse uh, captures for me what the rest of the chapters that we've been looking at suggest that the centerpiece for understanding everything else about the world and ourselves is grounded in the reality of God. It starts there, it ends there. And wisdom and fear is meant to be calibrated first and foremost by who is God. And all other fears are meant to take their calibration from that primary fear. Fear, as we all know, is a complicated thing and a subject for a much longer conversation. But I'll just say for the moment, fear is a gift. Fear is an extraordinarily important gift. It grounds our instincts. It alerts us to what is urgent and important. It protects us. It defends us, in fact. It is the only reason that we're here today is because fear is alive and well in the world. Now, we also know that fear can be a torment, that it can be a sign of our deepest brokenness and our greatest places of, of, of chaos in our mind and heart, in our society and culture. Fear can be like a disease of virus like that makes even the Omicron virus seem like something that spreads slowly because fear can spread faster than almost any other given emotion. It's partly because of our instinct for survival, but it's also because we are vulnerable creatures and in the opening chapters of Proverbs, the writer is simply inviting us to this broad place grounded in a deep reality that the character of God is for human well-being, for thriving, for health, for assurance, for well-being, for justice, for mercy and kindness and truth to be the kinds of things that ground how we live in the world. Fear can easily lead us down pathways where we become distracted by so many other things than those things. We're triggered by a thousand things that appear on any given day. And it's at the core of why there's such controversy around social media, because it is like a force field of fear. And what it does is actually disorient us. And a text like this one, says, friends, at the beginning of a new year, in this particular year, in 2022, let fear ground you and hold you and orient you. Let all of your fears be calibrated in relationship to God. Who is God in relationship to whatever it is that might be our points of greatest anxiety? Who is God for us? The text makes it clear again and again that God is with and for us and seeks us to live in wisdom so that we are attuned to that which would be life-giving. <laughs> what, what a more sensible thing. Do you want to be alive? Attune yourself to wisdom. Do you want to know joy? Tune yourself to wisdom. Do you want to know freedom? Tune yourselves to wisdom. Do you want to be relieved of endless anxiety? Tune yourselves to wisdom, which is the place that gives us a grounding in the face of all the other places. This doesn't shut down exploring these things through therapy. It doesn't shut down the careful work of assessing why it is that we have the certain fears that we may have. But what is it that we're allowing the fear of God to simply orient? I want to suggest in the chat column that my understanding is this. Biblical wisdom is seeking and living the truth of God in context. Biblical wisdom is seeking and living the truth of God in context. It starts and ends with God. The God 
who made flesh, who lived, suffered, died, was raised, and now speaks to us still by word and spirit. That is the invitation of a, of a full life lived in biblical wisdom. We live in a society and culture of endless opinion. On the cusp of the anniversary of January 6th, we're aware of the endless pundits, left, right, and otherwise, who are full of their declarations about what all of that was about. Friends, I want to suggest that in the face of that, or the ongoing virus, or the fears that we have emotionally, economically, academically, culturally, racially, whatever it may be, what grounds our life is this invitation to live a life of wisdom. It's not about an idea. It's not about get the right way of thinking. It's about the full embodiment of living in wisdom, which touches every dimension of our being. It starts and ends with God, but not a God that's distant, a God who comes into our place in which we are to live and move and have our being into the place in which this wisdom can give us its best gifts. The warnings of the first three chapters are serious warnings. They're saying, don't get lost, friends. You, you won't find life in getting lost. You find life by flourishing out of the expansive, deep, profound, merciful, kind, peace-giving love and truth of God. Friends, live out of wisdom that's grounded in the wisdom that comes first and foremost by who is God and who is God on our behalf. And what has that God done? And what is that God doing to hold us even today in this very moment, to hold us today and throughout this quarter as we walk further and further into 2022? The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And biblical wisdom is seeking and living the truth of God in context. May God bless us with that gift this year. Let me offer a prayer. Oh God, by your grace, we bow before you. No wisdom compares with yours. No rival truth claims are greater than yours. No inspiration is deeper or more clever or more life-giving. Nothing that we fear is greater than you. No anxiety that we hold coming into 2022 is greater in power than you are, greater in truth than you are, greater in hope and love than you are. But may our lives this year be marked by a, a thirst, an insatiable thirst to live and, lie and love in your wisdom. For we pray it in the name of Jesus Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. my vision.
verse one more time, heart of my own heart. And heart of my own heart, whatever befall, still be my vision, O ruler of all. Still glad that we were able to share this time together and um, I'm hoping that if you have your screens up we can maybe share our scribbles with each other just a little bit just to see what fun things um, we did together here's mine <laughs> nice nice <laughs> there we go yeah we can see some on the screen that's great thank you guys for participating in that I'm going to pass it over to Mark to Benedict us now and sometimes I think that we live in a in a five alarm world these days. There are extraordinarily large crises everywhere we turn. But what holds that is the reality of God, who is greater and deeper and wider, truer, more faithful, more complete, more adequate than we could ever be. May wisdom be the thing that holds us as we seek the God who himself is wise and without whom we have no hope and with whom we have every good reason for hope, even in the face of staggering challenges. May we walk into 22 with that assurance 
and seek the God of wisdom. That a God who is able to do exceedingly abundantly beyond all that we could ask or even imagine according to the power that is at work within us. To God be glory in the church, in the fuller community, in Christ Jesus, both now and forevermore. And God's people said, amen. I invite you to stick around for uh, coffee and conversation. Uh, we're going to be in part exploring how we can encourage one another on in lives of wisdom. So please stick around if you can. Uh, we'll be done not later than 1115, but it just gives us a chance. You can stick around for as long as you're able to be here. God bless you as you go out into 2022. And friends, as we always do, online or in person, when we end our worship moment together, we blow out the candle together. I invite you to blow out the candle together now. Go in grace and peace. And if you would like to stay for coffee and conversation, please stay right here on this Zoom link. We'll be back with you in just a second.